I noticed in one of the laser forums that somebody posted a graphic that their employer asked them to mark something to. Now this graphic was something like this on you see on the screen. So it had multiple areas, each of which was supposed to be marked to different depths. And when I saw that, I thought, okay, that's not a big deal. But then as I considered it a little bit more, I thought, you know, I don't have any settings worked up to do anything like that just off the top of my head. So I kind of sat down and worked out some numbers and some different hatch patterns and hatch settings that would get me to depths that I could say, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable that I'm going to be plus or minus a thousandth of that number, a thousandth of an inch, that is. So if you look at this first section up here, I sort of set a depth target, so uh, one thousandth of an inch to five thousandths of an inch, and I set the number of passes. I found this was a pretty good way to adjust the depth, a pretty simple way to adjust the depth, at least on my 20 watt, 150 millimeter laser. So let's take a look at the hatch I used, for example, for the one thousandth depth. So click on that. Let's go over to the left. You can see I have kind of a mess of objects here on the list, but let's ignore that. So. Our hatch is set up to have a cross hatch. I liked the pattern it gave me on the cross hatch, so I used that for everything. And I did try multiple different methods of hatching, and the best ones for a circle for speed were probably the out to in hatch, but this is probably the one I normally use, the bi-directional hatch. And I found that it gave me a little bit of a checkerboard pattern, and I didn't like the end finish, so I just gave up and used the unidirectional hatch, which takes a little bit more time, but it gives you a little bit nicer finish. So my first hatch is pretty much the depth hatch. That's the one we're going to spend all the you know time getting to a depth on. The second hatch is more of a cleanup hatch. And I did spend time you know separating these into multiple objects. So for this one, one thousandth of an inch depth dot, I actually separated it into two initially and said, what if I did my depth hatch and then my cleanup hatch and then did another depth hatch and another cleanup hatch? you know, repeatedly. And I wanted to know if that would give me a better finish or get me to a depth more quickly. And ultimately I just kind of decided it's not worth it. It's not getting me to a fast, it's not getting me to the depth faster. And there's really not much of an advantage and it's more complicated to set up an easy CAD. So let's keep things simple and quick. So the way this is set up is just to have the depth hatches one and the cleanup hatches two. I'm running this three times. I'm running the uh, depth hatch, as you can see here on my passes labeling five times for the 1000th. And uh, this is the finish pass. So this is kind of a polish to, to sort of clean up the floor after our cleanup passes. It's to give it a nice smooth finish. So for this, you can see my line spacing is quite a bit tighter. It's 0 0.01 millimeters. And I did play with uh, looser line spacing and tighter line spacing. But ultimately, I kind of said, this is probably the right way to go. And I'll show you the stainless that I marked to kind of arrive at that conclusion. The rest of these, I was doing 0 0.02 and I had 0 0.03 and that was an all right finish as well. Additionally, I did try to use different angles here, and I didn't see much of a difference, really. And I tried to also auto-rotate the angles, and there wasn't much advantage to doing any of that, at least on the two materials I was using, which were stainless and copper. So, doing that, I used pen settings. You can see I used three different pens here. I used pen 0, pen 1, and pen 2 for the three hatches, respectively. So if we jump over to the right side of the screen and we look at our pens, this is pen zero over here, and our speed is set to 425, power 85, and frequency 20. So since we're just trying to remove as much material as possible, I went for a very low frequency and I went for a pretty high power. And the speed is 425, and I can tell you from marking the stainless and the copper that if you tweak this speed up to about 450, you're going to have almost two thousandths less depth, maybe a thousandth less depth on the higher numbers, higher uh, number of passes. On the lower, it's not going to make that much of a difference. So the best way to tweak this, other than changing the number of passes, and you can see that a thousandth is worth about five passes to me at these settings. Probably a little bit closer to these numbers if I change this to 450, but I played around with it and it's it's not too far off in either direction. If your laser is more powerful, you'll have to probably reduce the number of passes or increase the speed. So that's pen zero and that's our depth pass. And pen one has 900 millimeters per second, 65% power and 40 kilohertz frequency. So we're essentially here we're trying to smooth things out. I'm kind of thinking of my passes as if you're a woodworker, different grits of sandpaper. So this is kind of our you know, 40 grit pass and then we're gonna take maybe an 80 and then maybe a 220 to finish it off. So that's kind of an easy way to think about the adjustments in frequency and our three different types of hatches. So finally, we're going to finish it off with this number two pen, and 
our speed is the same, power is on, uh, down to 20, and frequency is all the way up to 60. I played around with all the, going all the way up to 80, 70, 60, 50. There was really very little effect once I got my frequency too high. Some of you with a 30 or 50 watt laser may have to go quite a bit higher than this, but that's a decent starting point. You can at least see what it does and see if you're happy with the floor finish on the third pass. Sorry, the third hatch. So let's take a look at all the stainless I tried to mark. So here's one of the pieces, and you can see I've got a bunch of different circles here. Some of them are overlapped, as you can see a little bit of shadowing here. So I would run a single hatch, and then I would run other things on top of it. And if you look, let me jump back one picture. So if you see these on the bottom here where my mouse is, and over to the right, there's a bit of a checkerboard pattern, and that's kind of what happened when I was using the bi-directional hatch as opposed to the unidirectional hatch, as well as increasing the line spacing. So I didn't care for that too much, and I decided to just spend the time and get something a little bit nicer that looks more like the one in the center here. So you can see I tried higher power, lower power, and some of these are just, you know, attempting to mark individual hatches, so I separated them out to see what each one did. But that's the marking I did in the stainless, and you can see most of these aren't going for too much depth. These are probably a thousandth here, and this one's probably more like three thousandths. So after I worked out these settings on these little test dots, and the reason I have these test dots set up instead of the actual shape is one, they're quicker to mark, two, they're easy to check because I can drop the point of an indicator, a dial indicator, right into it and see how deep I got, more or less, and I could check that and tweak the settings if I needed to. And just so you can see that I actually did it, here's my little setup with the magnetic base and a dial indicator on a surface plate. And you can see that I'm kind of zeroing it out on the main surface. And then I'm going to drop it over the burr into each one. So left to right, this is exactly as is presented on the screen previously. This is going to be our 1,000th depth. And this dial indicator is actually presented in millimeters. So every tick mark is 0.01 millimeters. And you can see that our first marking is about 1,000th deep, which is 0.03 millimeters. And I won't make you watch me uh, check every single one of these. They're not super precise, but in order left to right, for the 1,000th, I actually hit about 1,000th. For the 2,000th, I hit about 2.5. For the 3,000th, I hit about 4,000th. For the 4,000th, I hit about 5,000th. And for the final mark, which was supposed to be 5,000th, I hit about 6.5. So you can see I overshot by a little bit, and that's what I was talking about before with my speed setting on the first hatch. So if you tweak that between 425 and 450, if you have a similar power laser with a similar field, then that'll be the difference because I was undershooting a little bit. So it's pretty sensitive when you get to the higher number of passes on the first hatch. But in many situations, you're really just going to care that you can hit a minimum depth. For example, in firearms engraving, I think, and don't quote me on this because I don't do this, but I think you need to hit a minimum of something like three thousandths of an inch. So if you know reliably that you can hit that plus whatever, then you're probably okay. So once I was happy with these numbers, I applied them all to this little graphic here, and I just drew a polygon and stretched out the points a little bit so I had something kind of interesting. It's hard to check, though, because these lands are only something like 2 millimeters. But you can see what I was going for. So inner to outer rings. So the inner here is only going to be a polish. So that's essentially the third hatch, and I think I applied pen 3 to that instead of pen 2, just so it was a different color instead of all being red. So the second ring is going to be 5,000 steps, so that's going to use these settings here. And the next one will be a polish, and the outer ring is going to be a 2,000 steps, so that'll use these settings here. So I kind of marked this whole thing on copper just to see how it turned out. And I also marked all of these dots because it's difficult to check this shape, so I checked the dots because they're using the same settings. So I'll let this marking play out, but as you might guess, it takes a little bit of time to do each one, and I'm going to speed it up about 10 times. But just to give you a sense of the actual time it takes to mark at each depth, the 1,000th depth is about 45 seconds, the 2,000th is 1 minute and a second, 3,000th is a minute and 34 seconds, 4,000th a minute 58 seconds, and lastly 5,000th is 2 minutes and 25 seconds. And keep in mind that I overshot my depths just a little bit, so if you tweak the speed, this will probably go a little bit faster. So, I hope this is of some use to somebody, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And as always, if you have any interest in playing with this file, I will make it available in a link to the description below. Thanks for watching.